So what are postdoc programs and which postdoc program is best for you to get into medical school? First of all, what are postdoc programs? They're gonna be programs that you do after undergrad, they're usually one to two years, and they can be certificate programs or special master's programs. So either when you're done with the program, you get a certificate or you get a master's in things like science, immunology, biochemistry, things like that. The certificate or the master's doesn't really matter in my opinion. What really matters is what you got out of the one or two years that you were there and the grades you got in your classes and things like that. So postdoc programs have different types of foci. So these are gonna be a couple of main ones. The biggest target demographic is gonna be for people that didn't do as well in their undergrad GPA and their academic performance as they wanted to and that includes myself. I did a postdoc program at Cal State East Bay or Cal State Hayward I think. They keep switching the names around and that actually helped me a lot so I thought I share some of my experiences. But regardless, one of the big reasons for doing post-up programs is going to be to improve your overall and science GPAs. A lot of post-up programs have upper division and maybe some lower division science classes, and unless they're more graduate level post-up programs. And what these post-up programs do is they, uh, they kind of count almost as like a fifth or sixth year of undergrad and raise your, as I mentioned, your overall and your, your cumulative and your science GPAs and they basically started to show medical schools that you are able to handle a rigorous scientific workload like you will in medical school. The next big group of applicants or participants in post-up programs are the career changers. So career changers are gonna be those that maybe they either they didn't decide on a career in their undergrad or they decided maybe late on in their undergrad career, maybe they came from like a business background or like a communications background or something else. These students are going to go into a post-up program so that they can take their prereq science classes like OCHEM, uh, biology, maybe some upper division classes as well like immunology or different things like that. Maybe they need to take their MCATs as well so po some post-up programs will target all those things more comprehensively. So academic enhancers and career changers are going to be the main target demographics for post-up programs but two other target demos are going to be the underrepresented minorities and the uh, financially and economically disadvantaged students. So if you do fall into those groups, postdoc programs may also apply to you, or maybe you fall into a couple of those groups, in which case postdoc programs would be a better fit. In reality, you can actually do postdoc programs basically on your own, where you sign up for like a state school uh, classes, and maybe you study MCAT on your own if you need to improve your MCAT as well. And there are pros and cons to both ways. So if you do your own program, you, you kind of craft your own and maybe MCAT schedule and your own classes that you take, upper division science classes that you take in a state school, the benefit to this would be that you save a lot of money compared to postdoc programs. However, uh, the drawback, and there are many drawbacks, would be that you're going to, one, have less priority for choosing classes. So it's gonna be way harder to choose classes since the students actually signed up for those programs are going to have the uh, priority for choosing classes. You're not going to have access to things like re uh, mentors and other resources, so you're not going to have as uh, great of an access to pre-med advisors, to uh, MCAT uh, studying resources, to networking opportunities either with professors or doctors or even your other uh, pre-med students. You're not going to have as much access to extracurricular activities, research opportunities, um, and uh, various things like that, various other resources. So the big thing is the resources in pre-med programs, pre-med post-op programs that could help you out that you're missing out on if you do things on your own. Another drawback is if you're not very self-disciplined or regimented, it may be hard for you to keep on top of all of the work they have to do and people sometimes fall behind and end up taking many more years to finish all of the classes that they wanted to do when they're studying on their own. So post programs, in my opinion, have a lot of pros and one thing would be the easier access to classes. Oftentimes you have priority for certain classes, like my postdoc program at Cal State East Bay, Cal State Hayward, had specifically designated classes for postdoc program students. So you'd be in a small classroom of about 30 students with um, one professor, and you'd be uh, doing, again, upper division science classes or sometimes lower division science classes. And you'd have easier access to those classes since they were designated solely for postdoc program students. I think I only had maybe once or twice when I couldn't get the classes I wanted to and I was able to get it like the next quarter or whatever. So it wasn't very challenging to get the classes I wanted when I wanted them. Another benefit of postdoc programs is that they are regimented and structured so they're more likely to have you stay on top of 
whatever program you laid out or whatever program they have in place and you're more likely to graduate in that one year or two year period so you're more likely to stay on top of your uh, plan schedule. One of the biggest benefits of postdoc programs is that they have different resources available that are harder to get if you're studying on your own. So things like access to mentors, things like uh, a small class size, so you have more one-on-one -on -one interactions with professors, you're able to get letters of recommendation and things easier. Some postdoc programs like the one I did have access to things like uh, mock interviews, have access to uh, things like committee letters. So we had a committee letter that we could do, we could have requested where we have the program director uh, talk to us as well as a mock interview that they looked at and a couple of letters of recommendation that we got from other professors or other uh, extracurricular activities that we did. And the uh, faculty members and the administrators all looked at a couple of those different sources and they basically crafted a nice uh, letter along with a letter packet that was nicely uh, organized and sent out to medical schools as part of our IAMCLAS application. So I think that was very beneficial as well as like the interview practice that we got as part of that and as well as the letters of recommendation that we got um, to help uh, create that committee letter. So those are different thing, uh, things that built upon the overall benefit of the post -up program besides just simply taking classes. So higher access to classes that you need a structured learning environment uh, and a huge abundance of resources and access to resources are the big pros of going to a post program that's more structured. Another benefit is that a lot of post-op programs like even Cal State East Bay, the one I went to, as well as more well-known schools like Georgetown and uh, UCSF and others have reputable programs that have a proven track record of getting students interviews and getting students even into medical schools. Some programs even have a higher likelihood of you getting interviews at their location if you do get into their post prep program. So that's another benefit. MCAT resources are also available. And if you do need to work on your MCAT, maybe redo your MCAT, or if you haven't taken an MCAT, maybe uh, do it for the first time. Often a lot of these post prep programs will have like study groups, other resources are available, maybe even at a discounted price to help you do well on your MCAT. And overall, generally, there's a lot of access to pre-med advisors since there are a lot of specialized advisors often designated for that program. So you have more access to them, less students competing for their time, and it's easier to uh, build relationships with them, with your other professors, with classmates, and uh, overall, the amount of resources and access that you have to opportunities is far greater in postdoc programs. So the cons of postdoc programs are going to be the expenses. Often, I, I believe, I'm not sure the current values, but I believe they're around twenty dollars to $30,000 per year. Some could be more or less expensive and also depends on how many classes and things you're going to take. And if, if you think about it, you have to pay for undergrad and then you have to also pay for your postdoc program and you're also going to have to pay for medical school. So unless you're able to borrow a lot of money or you have a lot of money stored up or you're able to work during it, it will be pretty difficult to pay off a lot of it and a lot of people have to resort to things like loans. If you're using interest-based loans, and especially if you have interest-based loans and a lot of debt already, then you have to th consider that a lot of these things are gonna compound over time and over medical school, so consider all those factors into whether you can afford a post op program or if you're gonna have to maybe wait a little bit to save up or maybe choose another uh, alternative route. post op programs can be competitive, especially if you go to the more reputable ones that have those better track records. Sometimes, unfortunately, you need a somewhat decent MCAT or GPA and good extracurriculars and letters and things like that to uh, actually apply and even uh, get into those uh, post bac programs. Another possible downside is that some post bac programs are somewhat impacted even in their classes and it might be hard, still slightly challenging to get all the classes you want. And some post bac programs actually have you in classes with first year medical students. So you're kind of competing against them and that could be challenging, especially since those medical students generally have a track record of doing well on um, exams and things like that since they're already in medical school so that may be a little extra challenging for you. So generally cost is the big thing and then competitiveness is another big uh, downside of going to a more structured post -bac program. I would say choose post -bac programs based on things like competitiveness, if you're competitive enough for that post -bac program, the focus of the post -bac program. So if the post -bac program is meant for, to be just for academic enhancers, then if you're a career changer, you may not have those basic science classes or other things that you need to do well in uh, as a pre-med applicant in that program. Or if a program's cater towards only underrepresented minorities, then it may be 
in your best interest if you're not an underrepresented minority to go to a different program. Choose programs based on the type of focus that they have and the resources that they have available and if it's if it fits well with your particular circumstances, choose a program based on things like geography, where you want to live, and maybe if that's a med school or affiliated with a med school that you want to get into, and choose programs based on reputability. So programs that have, again, that track record of getting its students into uh, interview spots and getting students actually into reputable medical schools that you'd like to get into. Those schools are going to have a higher chance of you succeeding in your uh, med school ambitions. What I highly recommend is to, uh, I'll include a link to the AAMC Prospect Program Finder down below in the description box and it basically has a nice online free tool that allows you to filter schools by location, by types of program, like if they're designed for academic enhancers or career changers or underrepresented minorities or things like that. And they may even have other types of uh, program characteristics in that post that program finder as well. So you can uh, look through that and figure out what post that programs work best with your particular situation and apply to those schools and hopefully you get in. So in conclusion, our post-op program is worth it. In my opinion and in my experience, they're able to help me out a lot. And seeing how other students benefited from post-op programs as well, getting into good interview spots and getting into good medical schools around the country, I would say that post-op programs are worth it if you're willing to really devote a lot of time and hard work into making sure you do really well in your post-op program as well as making sure you have the finances to actually pay for the tuition and fees for that program. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Leave a comment down below as well if you have any other questions about post-op programs or any other things for pre-meds or in medical school or anything else like that. Or if you have any other questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to leave them down below as well. Thank you guys again for all your support over the last several months. I wish you guys the best of luck getting into your post-op program or the medical school that you want to. And I hope you guys have a great summer. Take care.